Yeah, good day, lovely viewers. My name is Isa Idris, aka Mass Doctor. I'll be taking on some mathematics. I'll be dropping some videos time to time on mathematics. I treat mathematics as a doctor. So as you can see on the board, we have indices. I'm going to take us on indices. Now quickly, what do we mean by indices? Any expression in the form a raised to power n, okay, is said to be in index form. Any expression in the form a raised to power n is said to be in index form. Where a is called the base, okay, the letter a is called the base, and n is called the power or exponent or index. That implies we are free to say a exponent n a raised to power n a index n. So index power exponent they all mean the same thing. Note a raised to power n implies or is equal to a times a times a into n places. That is, if we have, for instance, a raised to the power 5, it means a multiply itself into 5 places. Similarly, the base can be a number. So let's take, for instance, we have 2 raised to the power 5. Some students will rush. When you ask them a question, 2 raised to the power 5, they say 10. is wrong. 2 raised to the power 5 implies what now? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And the answer is what? The answer is 32. Is that taken? Okay? Now, if any number, any constant is multiplying our, uh, let's say, a raised to the power n, that number is referred to as coefficient. For example, let's say we have 7 multiplying a raised to the power n. This, this can be written as what now? 7a raised to the power n. Note, this 7 is what we call coefficient. Okay, coefficient. The a is the base. Why the letter n remain either power index or exponent. Take note. Okay? Now, without taking much of our time, mathematics is all about formula. Any day, any time, each topic in mathematics, every topic in mathematics has its own formula. So it is the formula we apply to solve problem. But one thing is that you should be able to know what indices is all about. And that is what I did here. The laws of indices are the same thing as the formula we use to solve problem as far as indices is concerned. Law number one. The law states that if we have a raised to power n multiplied by a raised to power n, this law is the same thing as what we call the product rule. Since the base are equal, you pick one. And you look at the sign. If it is multiplication, you add the powers. That is n plus n. What I'm going to do is this. 
I will quickly run through the laws. Then we start solving problem. And you see how I'm going to be applying the laws to tackle each problem that comes our way. Number two, a raised to power m divided by a raised to power n. This equal to, the base are the same. We call this what division law or division rule. You pick one among the base. Then, since if the sign is division, the law state that you subtract the powers, that is m minus n. Law number three, a raised to power zero is equal to one. This law states that anything raised to power 0 is 1. Let me quickly show you how come anything raised to power 0 is 1. Okay. If we have, let's say, 3 raised to power 3 divided by 3 raised to power 3. This is the same as if you apply this law to the base are the same, you pick 1. And if you subtract the powers, we are going to have this, which is what? 3 raised to power 0. Now, let's assume solving this, this is the answer. Similarly, this same question can be solved this way. 3 raised to power 3 implies 3 times 3 times 3 divided. Okay, this symbol division is this. Divided by what now? 3 times 3 times 3. If you multiply the numerator, we are going to have 27. Multiply the denominator to give us 27. Now, 27 divided by 27 is 1. When you look at this question, and you look at this question, you discover that they are the same. I mean this. They are the same. We simplify this. This gives us the answer. This is the answer. And when we simplify it this way, we got what? 1 as the answer. Since the question are the same, it simply means the answers are also the same. So 3 raised to power 0 is 1. But note, if you have maybe 5a together raised to power 0, this will give you 1. But if it is 5x raised to power 0, this is going to give us 5. Because here, yeah, the power 0 affects everything inside the bracket. While here, yeah, the power 0 belongs to only x. Now, law number four. The law states that if we have a raised to power minus n, it's going to give us 1 all over a raised to power n. That is, to remove the negative sign. We are, all these laws have proof. Is that taken? They all have proof. So, if you have a raised to power minus n, to remove the minus sign, it will become 1 all over a raised to power n. Number five. If you have a raised to power 1 over n, you open a root. The base must always be under the root. The denominator will, be the end, the, will become the nth root of the base. Then all raised to power 1. But mind you, any number raised to power 1 or anything raised to power 1 remains the same. Law number 6 a raised to power m over n. This law is similar to law number 5. But the difference is that in law number 5, the numerator is 1. While here, the numerator is n. So what will this give us? A root. Then the nth root, the base, into bracket upon raised to power n. You can write it like this, or a root, the denominator of the power, the base, which is a raised to power n. If you simplify both, we are going to get the same answer. Law number seven, a raised to power n into bracket n. Here we have two powers. One inside the bracket and the other outside the bracket. How do we go about this? The law states that the power inside the bracket, we multiply the power outside the bracket. So we have mn. mn is the same thing as what? m times n. Now, these are the basic laws as far as indices is concerned. But being a doctor, 
I am. I'm going to add more filling. Because at times we have problems that, in fact, when you apply these laws, you see that, okay, it's going to take you uh, a long process. But all these ones are just short, short um, way of trashing questions in indices. So look at number eight. If you have A raised to power M divided by B raised to power M. This law is similar to law number two. But the difference is that here the base are equal. We have AA as the base. While here the base are not the same. Here the powers are not the same. While here the powers are the same. The law state that if you have a problem like this, what you do is you divide the base, that is A over B, and pick one among the common powers. You can have a question such as what now? 2 raised to power 3 divided by, let me say, 1 raised to power 3. 2 raised to power 3 normally means what? 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 1 raised to power 3 means what? 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. So if you divide, your answer is still going to give you 8. So the same thing. Yeah, if you, if you apply this law and write it as 2 over 1, okay, a divided by B, is that taken? One thing in mathematics is that they use letters to state the formulas, but when it comes to problems, you will start seeing numbers. So, once you write it like this, you now pick one among the common powers, here become 3. 2 divided by 1 is 2, and 2 raised to the power 3 will give us 8. So, the same answer. Law number 9. A raised to the power M times B raised to the power M. Okay, this law is similar to law number one. Again, here the base are not the same. The base are the same, pardon? While here the base are not the same. Here the powers or index are not the same, but here the index are the same. What do you do? You open a bracket, you multiply the base, okay, and pick one among the common powers. The last but not the least, law number 10 is what I called law of somersault okay when you have let's take for instance we have a all over b all raised to power minus n this law 10 is similar to law 4 because they both have a negative index okay but here is a what the base happen to be whole number while here the base happen to be what a fraction so what do we do to remove the negative, okay, attached to the M, just apply, that's why I call it law of somersault, just turn the base upside down. It becomes what? B all over A. And you put your M. Is that okay? Take for instance, we have 2 over 3 raised to power minus 4. Going by this law number 4, if we are to use this, let's do as if we don't have this law 10. If we are to use this, removing this minus sign become what? 1 all over 2 over 3 raised to power 4. We have removed the minus sign because 1 all over the base raised to power, there will be no more minus. So that is what I did here. This become what now? 1 all over 2 raised to the power 4. This 4 affects both 2 and 3. 2 raised to the power 4 is 16. And 3 raised to the power 4 is what? 81. This become what now? 1 divided by, okay, this is division, 16 all over 81. In mathematics, whenever you have fraction, the division and you this this the sign of operation is division it will change to times multiplication and this fraction will turn upside down 81 over 16. anything multiplied by one remain the same so we have 81 over 16. now look at the steps involved just to trash this question 
and compare it to this law 10. If you apply law 10, just watch out. Same question. 2 over 3 raised to power minus 4. By comparison, our numerator here 2 is the same as letter A. 3 is the same as B. And our letter M is 4. So what do you do? Just turn it upside down. And it becomes what? 3 over 2 raised to power 4. There will be no more minus. Once you turn it upside down, there will be no more minus. Now, the 4 affects everything. 3 raised to power 4, 81. And 2 raised to power 4, 16. Answer. You can see. Just 1, 2. Answer. Why this? Stay calm. Mass doctor. You will enjoy the class. Example 1. We have to simplify the following. And we are from question A down to question F. Whenever you have a problem to solve in mathematics, you write your solution that you start solving without wasting time. Let's get to business. Solution. A. The question is what? 5 raised to power minus 2 times 16 raised to power 3 over 4. 5 raised to power minus 2 is similar to law 4. You can see it on the board. Okay. 5 raised to power minus 2 is similar to what? A raised to power minus N. So, removing this minus become what? 1 all over 5 raised to power 2. 16 raised to power 3 over 4 is similar to A raised to power M over N. Okay. So, applying that law, it become what? Root. The base under the root, remember? The denominator will be here, raised to power what? The numerator. Is that taken? So we have 1 all over 5 raised to power 2 is not 10, but what? 5 times 5, which gives us 25. Times what we have inside the bracket, the inside the bracket means we should look for a number that we multiply itself into four places and the answer will give us 16 and that number is 2 if you check 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 it will give us 16 so we have 2 raised to power 3 and this gives us what 1 over 25 times 2 raised to power 3 is what 8 all over 1 when you multiply this 1 times 8 gives 8 over 25 times 1, 25. So that is the answer to question number 1. It's very simple as A, B, C. So that is the solution to 1A. 1B. We have 2A raised to power minus 2. Multiply by bracket open 5A all raised to power 3. Yeah. You discover that the power minus 2 belongs to A only. Assuming 2A are in brackets, then we can say minus the minus 2 belongs to both. But here, the minus 2 belongs to only A. So this is the same as writing what now? 2, you know that the sign in between 2 and A is a times. You can introduce it. A raised to power minus 2 times yet yeah, the power 3 affects both 5 and a so 5 raised to power 3 is 125 5 times 5 times 5 125 and also a raised to power 3 give us what a q that is a raised to power 3 yeah we now remove this minus sign again we are going to apply law 4 to do that and that gives us 2 times 1 all over a raised to power 2, no more minus, times what? 125 a raised to power 3. If we make this over 1, since this is a fraction, and also make this over 1, 
so that we multiply out the numerator that gives us what 2 times 125 is 250 okay then a raised to power 3 all over what a raised to power 2 now here we are having a raised to power 3 this can also be written as 250 times a raised to power 3 all over a raised to power 2 so this we can apply law number 2 because this is division sign so that gives us 250 times remember if the base are the same what do we do we pick one and if the sign is division what do we do again we subtract the power so that gives us 3 minus 2 and that will give us 250 times a raised to power 1 anything raised to power 1 remains the same so there is no need of putting the power 1 if you now multiply this out the answer is 258 so the answer is 258 c the question is what 0 0.216 raised to power minus 2 over 3. Note, whenever you have decimal, quickly change it to fraction. How do we change this to fraction? 0 0.216 will become 216 all over 1000. 216 all over 1000. Because this number is 0, you will ignore it. And how many digits after the decimal point? We have three. So you are going to add three zeros. It is good to introduce bracket and put the power minus two over three. If you divide this, or if you convert this back to decimal, it's still the same as this. Now, changing this to, what do you call it now? Fraction, now make it look like law number 10. So what do we do? To remove this minus sign, we are going to have 1000 all over 216. You turn it upside down. Okay? Raised to power what now? 2 over 3. No more minus. Because you have turned it upside down. You have uh, uh, applied the law of somersault. Applying law number 6, okay if you look at the number, the power is what fraction just like this we are going to have what now a root the base 1000 all over 216 then the cube the 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 denominator is three so we are going to have the cube root of the base all raised to power the numerator which is two now what is that number that we multiply itself into three places and we are going to get 1000? The number is 10. And also, what is that number that multiplies itself into three places to get 216? The number is 6 raised to power 2. We can reduce this to its lowest term. 2 year 3, 2 year 5. So we have what? 5 over 3 raised to power what? 2. Now, the 2 affect everything inside the bracket. 5 raised to power 2 is 25. And 3 raised to power 2 is what? 9. Changing this to what? Missed number. How many 9 can we get in 25? That is 2. And 2 times 9 is what? Is 18. That means we have a remainder of 7 all over 9. Answer. D. Question D. We have cube roots of 8a raised to power minus 6. Now, what we have here to remove this uh, cube root, okay, to remove the cube root becomes 8a raised to power minus 6, 1 over 3. One thing about law in mathematics is that at times the question will come in this form. You take them to this, you take the question to this form. And at times, the question will come in this form, you bring it to this form. Now, if you look at what I have here, I tell you law number five is what I apply to change it. The question itself was in this form. Okay, was in this form. 
So what did I did? What did I do? I don't I change it to this form. So I have a raised to the power one over n. N is similar to three that we have outside as the root. So one over three. Now this one over three affects everything inside the bracket. At this point, I'm going to use another method. This eight can be written as what? Two raised to power three. Okay. And a raised to power minus six. Then we now have what? One over three. Remember, one of the law states that if you have two powers, one inside the bracket and the other one outside, what do you do? You multiply the powers out. So in that case, this become what now? 2 raised to the power 3 times 1 over 3. This power multiplied by this times a raised to the power minus 6 multiplied by 1 over 3. This 3 we cancel out this. We are going to have 2. 3 year 1, 3 in 6 year 2. So we have what? 2 times a raised to the power minus 2. If we remove this minus, we are going to have what? 2 times 1 all over a raised to the power 2. Making this over 1, 2 times 1 will give us 2. And 1 times a raised to the power 2 is what? a raised to the power 2. Please, it is wrong. To cancel this and this. This a raised to power 2 means what? a times a. So we have this as the answer. You stop there. Question E. Okay, question E. We have what? 4 over 25 raised to power minus 1 over 2 times 2 raised to power 4 divided by 15 all over 2 raised to the power minus 2. Okay. To remove this minus sign, apply law of somersault here. It will become what? 25 all over 4. Raised to the power what? 1 over 2. No more minus. 2 raised to the power 4 is what? 16. That is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That gives us 16. Divided by, to remove this minus again, turn this upside down. 2 all over 15. Raised to the power what? 2. Now, apply what? Law number 6. To this, we are going to have root 25 all over 4 times 16 divided by the reason why i did not write the two we are having here i did not write it here is that square root means two it's just like writing one x putting the one you don't need to put it if you write just x we know that the coefficient is what the coefficient of the x is two so the same thing don't write two but if the number here is more than two you can write it out now, 2 raised to the power 2 is 4, as we all know. And 15 raised to the power 2 is what? 225. You can use your calculator, but there are some certain things you just have to know of. And 15 times 15 is 225. What is the square root of 25? 5. And what is the square root of 4? 2 times 16 over 1. Make it a fraction. Division chain to times, this fraction will turn upside down. So we have what? 2 to 5 all over 4. We can cancel out 2 year 1, 2 in 16, 8. 4 year 1, 4 in 8, 2. So if we multiply the numerator out, 5 times 2 times 225 our answer is going to be what 2250 very simple because 5 times 2 is 10 and 10 times 225 will give us this the last question for now f we have 56 x raised to the power minus 4 times 
14 x raised to the power minus 8. In this case, what do you do? Bring out the 56 and 14, then you multiply them because they are both what? Coefficient. Bringing the coefficient out, we are left with the unknown, as in the power and the base, the base and the power, which is what? x raised to the power minus 4 times what? x raised to the power minus 8. Now, if you multiply 56 by 14, okay, 56 times 14, the answer is 784. 784 times the base are the same. What do you do? You pick one. And since the sign is multiplication, we are going to add minus 4 plus minus 8. Two signs don't come together in mass, so you introduce a bracket. 784 times x plus times minus will give us minus. So minus 4 minus 8 is minus 12. Removing this minus now, we give us 784 times 1 all over x raised to the power 12. And if you make this over 1, you multiply our answer will be 784 all over x raised to the power 12. Please always differentiate the base from the power.